Welcome back to a second video on using Nina's Target Scheduler plugin. When we last looked at Nina, we had created some exposure templates and a project for a duplicated equipment profile. So if I click on the plugins page in Target Scheduler, you can see the equipment profile, which I copied and to which I added a project called Virgo, which was basically a number of Messier targets in the Virgo region. And equally on the exposure templates, I did a couple of very simple exposure uh, templates for that particular equipment profile. What I want to do is ignore all this and go back to the original profile, which is the one that I have loaded at the moment. And this has a slightly more complicated set of exposure profiles and targets and projects. So now that I've collapsed it so we can see what's happening, what I've done is created two sets of targets, one for the natural color messiers and the other for the narrowband messiers. And equally, I've created a set of exposures that suit both wideband and narrowband imaging. If you look on the right hand side, you'll see that there's an active indicator with a green tick and with a red cross. The red cross means I've deliberately deactivated it. And this is done in its properties by changing the state from inactive to active. You notice once I've saved it, that becomes a green tick. So I'm just going to put it back again for the moment and leave it at that. There is something else I'd like to explain. If I look at the exposure templates for the GT294, you'll notice that my twilight setting is civil. Now you wouldn't normally do imaging with that level of light pollution, but the way I'm running this system is that it'll already be darker than civil before it gets to the target scheduler and I simply want the target scheduler to run. The reason for that being that I want to start the imaging just before nautical starts. And at the moment, if I click on an exposure template and edit it, I can only select nighttime, astronomical, nautical or civil. I can't, as in the normal sequencer, do an offset on these. So I'm just simply going to leave it at civil and then I'm going to do my accurate start of acquisition using an ordinary Nina sequencer in command. And in that way, that gives me a little bit of time to fix any issues before it gets too dark and I start wasting clear skies. To demonstrate that, if I go back to the sequencer and look at my startup commands, it's based on connecting the equipment, initializing the mount, cooling down to dusk. So it cools the camera and then it waits for nautical dusk minus 20 minutes. And this sets the darkness threshold. Then importantly, just before the scheduler runs, I want to do a couple of things. Firstly, I want to do an initial autofocus. Otherwise, potentially the slew and center won't work. So I unpark the scope, slew to an arbitrary part of the sky, run autofocus and then park the scope again. And that runs immediately before the scheduler runs. At present, the scheduler doesn't unpark ahead of its initial slew. So in the scheduler, in the loop conditions, what I'm now going to do is put an unpark instruction in here, though this will not be needed for future versions of the plugin. So that'll unpark the scope and then run the scheduler. The other thing you might want to consider is what you do if there's a pause between targets. And what I typically do is I have before and after wait instructions, I simply park and unpark the scope. And in this case, on a portable rig, I park the scope so that it's horizontal. So if it does rain, it doesn't get into the front optics. So in this case, unpark scope is run before the target scheduler. But if the target scheduler doesn't actually have any active targets for that night, then the scope will be unparked. And one way to deal with that is to use the second of the unique instructions that the scheduler brings to Nina, and that is a loop condition. And that's called the target scheduler condition. 
and it has one of two options, while targets remain tonight and while active projects remain. If I leave it at while targets remain tonight, it'll only go around this loop whilst there are targets to actually image. So these instructions will not be executed at all if there are no targets. It may not be necessary to do these last two actions in future versions of the scheduler because it's being considered to put an unpark before the first slew. And this is a good time to show you what the scheduler does along a timeline. This has been taken from the instructions and it shows a number of different plans as time progresses. Each plan is worked out at the time of its execution as opposed to forecast. So at the beginning of plan one, which is associated with target one, it does a slew and then at the end of its duration, which is the minimum target time, which I've got set to 30 minutes, it re-evaluates what to do next. In this case, continue with the same target. And then at this point in time, it decides I can't continue with the, the, the current target. I need to do a second target, but it's not ready. So I need to wait for it to come over the horizon. So there's a wait period. And then after that wait period, it re-evaluates and said, yep, target two is still good. It slews does the target imaging, and then it says, right, that's enough of target two, because that's, and I'm going to move on to target three. And it pops onto target three, does a slew, and then there's a problem, there's a cloud. So there's a safety interrupt, and target three is stopped. And then at the end of the safety period, when it becomes safe again, the scheduler reevaluates what's left and says, right, I'm going to now do target three. And again, it slews and starts target three. And each of these plans typically is going to be my 30 minutes, which are set as my minimum target time. Along the bottom, you can see indicators where we can use those special triggers, which allow you to do special instructions at events. And you'll see before new target and after new target, and before wait and after wait. When a target continues for several plans, there's only one before and one after. But it can be that a target with a single plan will have a before and after. So I think that possibly explains how the scheduler is evaluating what best to do next when it gets to that point in time. And what we've just been discussing in the sequencer is whether to ensure that the mount is unparked at the beginning of a slew and center. This is a good time to return to the sequencer and have a look at what happens when you actually physically take images or are ready to take images on a night. If we go back to the plugins page, we've previously been looking at only the first of the three options, which is target management. If I shrink that down and go into scheduler preview, what this is meant to do is give you an indication of what will happen when you run the scheduler on any night. If I click the arrow and select my profile, and hit run for today, it'll tell me what it thinks it'll try to do in terms of imaging. So it's doing M102, M13, 15, 29, and so forth. And if I click the little arrow here, it gives a further breakdown of what it thinks it will try to do. Now, this is only an estimation because environmental conditions and all kinds of problems can interrupt proceedings and change what happens but it gives a good idea of what it's trying to do. And lastly, if I shrink that down and bring up the third of the options, Acquired Images, this is going to tell me what I've managed to actually do for any given project or target. So for instance, if I choose my Marathon and choose M13, absolutely nothing, or if I just choose any, you can see what it's managed to achieve. So this is against a date range. So for instance, if I change the date range to earlier in the year, there's a great deal more and there's a little tiny slider here and you can pull it through. So for instance, if I was to now choose M46, which appears to have been imaged, you can now see all of the images that have been taken. And there's something else that this does, which is quite useful. If I go back to any, 
and wait for it to update. So this image here was rejected and it's listing not only the project and the target, but the filter, the number of stars that were counted, the half flux radius, and whether it was accepted or not. So in this case, the star count seemed to be abnormally low and it rejected it, probably because some light cloud drifted over. Now it's not deleting the image, but what it does do is it makes an allowance and takes an extra one just in case. And just to remind ourselves, the image grading criteria are stored in the target management option. So if I click on here and click on the profile and click its preferences, these are the image grader preferences. And you can also decide whether to run them at all. This is a good time to start doing this in anger rather than theory. But for that, I'm going to need a clear night. So I'm going to pause it and come back when I'm ready. So the weather's been kind to us and we're ready to start imaging. On the profiles, we have several projects, both for narrowband and wideband messiers. When I click on the profile, you can see they're listed. And if I look at the properties, grading criteria are entered into the profile. However, if I look at the target, you'll see the image grading has been disabled. It's false. So therefore, no exposures will be automatically accepted. If I look into the scheduler, then we can see what's likely to be imaged tonight, though this is not necessarily going to happen based on imaging conditions. If I go into the sequencer, we have the sequencer we've shown before with the startup, um, the acquisition, and then a shutdown. And in the startup, since we've already connected the equipment, we're just going to initialize the mount, cool down to dusk, and then do some focusing. So I'm going to join after it's done that initial setup and is ready to image. So that involves slowing to an arbitrary alt as running the autofocus and parking the scope. If we now run the sequence and return to it when it's just about to finish off the initialization and go into the scheduled acquisition. As it goes into the acquisition sequence, it does the initial checks with the database and immediately populates the target scheduler container with a list of instructions that it's executing and also, as you can see at the top, the first of the targets, which happens to be M40, which appears to be setting in about an hour's time. The other thing to note is that when you look at the first instruction, which is the SLU, it will then be quickly followed by the centering at the top of the screen and then setting up for the first exposure. Once it's solved, it will move on to the next. So it switched the filter, looked at the before target instruction, which in our case is blank. It's moved on to taking the first exposure, which you can see along the bottom is currently around 20 seconds of two minutes. Coming back just before the first exposure finishes, you can see that the target end time has been populated in the top. And as we come up to the last five seconds of the exposure, once it's brought it in, it now appears in the table in the middle as the first of the exposures that have been taken. And it now starts the second. If I look in the acquired images, you can see that there's been one M40 target image with the L filter. And at the moment, it has not been accepted because we are not doing image grading. If I now take a look at the target management tab, just to remind ourselves, on the project itself, image grading has been set false. And if I scroll down to M40, you can see at the moment it's saying nothing's happened, but if I refresh the exposure plans, you can now see that one luminance has been acquired, but none have been accepted. And to fix that manually is to go into the edit function, 
at the top left and then manually change this to 1 and then save it. This however does not change the status of the acquired images and if you look at this it shows that accepted is still false even after a refresh and this is because it doesn't know what particular exposure was rejected. If we go back to the sequence a few minutes later you can see that it's now almost completing the green exposures and at some point it'll do a dither just to remind ourselves that's set in the project so at the moment if you look at the filter switch frequency it is 2 which means it's taking filter pairs and then it dithers after every two frames in other words two frames of each filter once it's gone through this target the scheduler will move on to the next target and decide whether or not it needs a wait in between and continue until it runs out of sky or targets and then it will move on to the end of sequence instructions. I hope that's been useful. Part 3 is already available and clear skies.